here we have a really cool plugin called Mix Checker Pro, and this is from Autified. And the point of Mix Checker Pro is that it allows you to do basically what the name says. You can check your mix right on your studio monitors uh, without having to bounce it out and load it on other devices. You know, say you uh, you do some mix in your DAW listening through your studio monitors or even you're checking it on your headphones as uh, as well. Then you want to check it on your iPad. So you have to bounce it out. You have to put it on your iPad, see how it sounds there, see how the mix translates. Maybe you want to take it out to your car, see how the mix translates to your car. You come back to your studio, you make some more tweaks, you export, you go back to your car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The point of this plugin is it allows you to get a pretty good idea of how your mix is going to sound on all of these other devices without having to leave your studio. And of course, it's not just for music. Even if you just do, uh, just do things like podcasts, you know, you want to hear how your voice is going to translate if, somebody's, uh, if someone's listening on an iPhone or someone's listening on an Android phone or Android tablet or, uh, or listening on a Bluetooth speaker, for example. So first up, you would put Mix Checker Pro on your master output, okay? That way, anything running through your DAW, you can check it real quick. Now, before you bounce out your material, make sure you completely bypass this plugin or you remove it, uh, remove it from your master. Otherwise, these uh, you know, devices, the profile, these profiles of these devices will be written to your file. Now, that is also something that you can do, by the way. You know, for example, uh, say you're making a video or something, and uh, you have a scene of uh, a person listening to drums through an iPhone, so you need to uh, simulate the sound. You could, you, you know, you could put Mix Checker Pro directly on a track, and then simulate that. Of course, bounce that sound out, throw it into your video, or or whatever you uh, want to do. So you could technically put this directly on a track, and uh, you know, write these simulations to uh, to the file as well. But again, in general, you're going to want to put this right on your master output. All right. Up here, you can change the size of the interface. When you first load it up, it's going to look like this. A little bit small for me, so we can jack that up so we can actually, actually see it. Right here is your edit mode. And in here, you can change these simulations that are in uh, each button set. And you can set up uh, custom button sets or custom, uh, custom presets that you can uh, quickly recall. And as I click on each of these, I can change some things like the stereo bass. So basically the width, pull it down and make it mono. You can see it opens up or here it opens up. Change the uh, overall distortion level and the overall volume of each device separately here. You can also change the device in each slot. Now what you see in this button set here is not the only devices that you have access to. You actually have access to I believe it's over 60 different devices. So if you want to set up your own button set, not only can you grab a button and then you know, drag that device wherever you want, you can also select something and then right here, assigned simulation, use this down arrow. You can see all of these different options that you have. And you can set up your custom button sets. You can check your mix real quickly on uh, any of these devices. Just a real quick look uh, at everything right there. You can also uh, give things custom labels. So by default, you see things like seven inch vintage, disco pool, you know, two inch black, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to, you can always head back there into your uh, edit uh, mode here, and we can change this to whatever we want. So like, we could just call the speakers or monitors, you know, I could call it, you know, monitors or whatever you want, and then save that as a different, there we go, we'll just call it new button set, or actually we'll just call it uh, new three. There we go. Save that. And then we can recall that right here. So here's new three. And I called it monitors right there. Okay, so you can customize all of those labels as well. Also, whenever you're back here, you can listen to these simulations, you don't have to be here on this, uh, on this front page. So we can be back here, listening. Maybe I don't like that, switch it to some sort of a PA. Okay, so let's head, let's just cancel out of that right there. Now to load up a preset, you can just click the name or click right over here and load up a preset. There's a lot of presets or button sets already right here. You can also again, create your own. So if you wanted to create a button set of just cars, we could head through here and just start loading up uh, a bunch of cars in here and create a custom 
button set, of course, setting up our stereo bass, again, basically how wide these things are and the overall volume, the overall distortion. You know, they even modeled the uh, distortion of, uh, of these devices. Once you get everything set up and your, and your labels, uh, you know, customized just the way you want, just call that, you know, minivan three or something like that. We can save it or we can save as and give it a new slot, call this um, uh, cars two or whatever you want, save that. And then you can always quickly recall that your uh, button sets right there. Okay. Over here, you have a wrench and you can do things like set the calibration. And that really comes into play once we get down to the uh, distortion here. So let me turn on the distortion here. Because they did model the distortion of these uh, different devices, you know, things distort, especially consumer uh, speakers and things like that really have a, a more distortion in them than uh, your studio monitors, or at least, you know, <laughs> than your studio monitor should. So if I set that calibration, if I pull this way down, it's really gonna clip and distort much sooner, of course, depending on the level. So you can simulate all of that uh, as well. Now down here, you also have other options, which are pretty cool. So we have our noise, our auto, the bypass, which is pretty self-explanatory, mono and distortion. We already sort of looked at the uh, distortion. So let's look at the noise real quick. Maybe we are in, um, in a car. Let's say we're in a car and we're listening to this track here. Now I can turn on my noise and I can simulate being inside of a, inside of a car. So now I'm inside the car, let me turn on the noise and you'll hear that. So I can change the level of the noise right here, put it to whatever you want. So we're in a car, we're driving down the highway, we're simulating the noise and we're simulating the car. And then we can check our mix and see how it uh, sounds basically in the real world. Now, what if you were listening to this here through, uh, let's say, headphones and we'll say that you're maybe at a playground or maybe you're in a mall say you're in a mall now one of the cool things about noise whenever you use one of the uh headphone devices is the noise is now simulated as if it's coming through the shells which is a pretty cool pretty cool touch so let's uh turn our noise back on we'll listen to our mix through headphones here Again, it just adds, turn it down a bit. It just adds another level of realism. So if I turn on auto, it's going to automatically switch the devices for us. And it's going to do it based on the time we set right here between one second and 12 seconds. We'll just put it on, you know, around two seconds or so. We'll play back and we'll turn on the auto. And it will automatically switch for you. All right, so bypass, of course, you already know what that does. Listen to, uh, you know, listen to your mix, listen to your podcast through your studio monitors and then check it on your different devices with your big bypass button there. Then you have a mono and the mono actually has some different modes here that we can use. So obviously mono is going to, uh, you know, down mix this to mono. But then you have the option to uh, switch how this acts. So you can do mono from left, mono from right, or you can make it uh, swap the uh, sides. And then you have the distortion. And again, you can customize that up here with setting your calibration, and you can also customize it on an individual basis again back here in the edit mode for each device. You can set that up uh, and get those acting just the way that you want. So a lot of customization here, but overall really easy to use and really easy to understand. Uh, now, if you're not seeing all of these options, just click this arrow right there and then you'll have uh, those options presented to you. All right, pretty cool, pretty easy to, uh, to figure out. So real quick, just in case it's not clear why you might wanna use something like this. I just bypass it. 
let's say we're EQing or maybe you're adding reverb or delay or who knows what, or maybe you're just adjusting the overall level of things. You know, how much bass do I need in here? How much kick? How many, you know, how much uh, snare do I need in this? Now, it might sound great in your studio, and this is often the case. We get things sounding amazing in the studio, but whenever you move them into the real world, it just doesn't work. So that is the point of this plugin. So if you are adjusting your low end, your top end, delay, chorus, reverb, etc., whatever you're adjusting, you might want to check it on some, you know, some other devices uh, as well. So it sounds good here. How would this sound? on an iPad or a tablet. Do I need to adjust that top end? You know, do I need to make compromises? Because that's really what mixing is. It's, it's a bunch of compromises to make sure your mix sounds as good as it can on as many different devices as it can. You know, you, you can mix just for your studio, but if you don't have an idea about how your mix translates to other people's studios or to other people's headphones or cars or other devices, then your mixes aren't going to sound as good as they, as, they, uh, as they could. So essentially what you're doing here is you're checking your mix against other devices, making little tiny adjustments to make sure it sounds as good as it can on as many different devices as it can. Now you can also head up here to the wrench and go to the remote control. And this will allow you to use the Mix Checker app, or you could even use a browser. And then you could control this, uh, again, from the app, from your device, from your iPhone, from your Android phone, from your Android tablet, from your iPad, or from maybe another laptop or something through, uh, through a web browser. And then you could do things like walk around your studio with just your iPad or your phone, and you could switch through those uh, different devices without having to be tied down to your computer. All right, so that is Autified Mix Checker Pro. If you want to pick it up, I'll, of course, have links in the description below. Let's go ahead and to play us out, I'll uh, go through some more of these simulations. <laughs> 